We would love it if everybody became a member of Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit. So on occasion, we release free episodes of Hands on Mac to show you exactly what you'll get if you join the club. Thanks for listening, and uh, we can't wait to see you in the club. Coming up on Hands on Mac, we're taking a look at a new feature from Apple. It's the Apple Diagnostics for Self-Service Repair. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This show is brought to you by members like you. Thanks. Welcome back to Hands on Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today I'm super pumped to show you a new feature, a new service from Apple. Um, Apple has continued to show how important uh, self-service repair is to the company, or at least uh, give the impression that self-service repair is important to the company. And in doing so, has over time made it possible for uh, individuals to be able to do more repairs of their Apple devices. Uh, The company just announced as we're recording this on Wednesday, December 13th, a new feature uh, or a new service that allows you to run a diagnostics test on your devices. Uh, This is called the Apple Diagnostics for Self-Service Repair. So I thought it'd be a great time to show you what all is involved with this so that you can understand what this process looks like. So let's first and foremost take a look at the web page, and then we can go from there to kind of dig into how this works. So here we are, and you can see we've got the Apple Diagnostics for Self-Service Repair website opened in the background, and then I have a phone here. Now, the reason I'm having to show it to you like this, normally this is where I would have it up on the screen, but we have to do some diagnostics that require the phone to actually be disconnected. So we're working a little bit different today. First and foremost, you need to turn off the phone to move it into diagnostics mode. Uh, In order to use the diagnostic suites for the iPhone and the uh, Mac, by the way, you need to be running iOS 17 or later and macOS Sonoma 1. Point, or excuse me 14.1 or later to be able to do one of these diagnostic sessions and of course if you're running beta software no diagnostics for you. All right, so first and foremost, you are going to press, uh, if you have an iPhone without a home button, you're going to press the side button and one of the uh, volume buttons. It can be volume down or volume up and you press and hold until the power off option appears and then we'll power off. Then after the phone is completely turned off, Apple says to wait 30 seconds. That's a heck of a long time. So we're not going to wait a full 30 seconds, but instead uh, we are press and hold both the volume up and the volume down buttons. Then while you're holding those buttons, you will plug in a USB charger. So I'm going to unplug that, and it's important that you have a 20 watt or higher power adapter that you're using. And so while you're holding down the buttons, you will plug those in, and when the Apple logo appears, then you can release the buttons. So I'll look at the side, I'll make sure that I have both the volume up and volume down buttons selected, and then I'm also making sure that these, uh, that the side button is not being pressed. So I will press and hold those buttons, and then I'm going to plug it in. So here we go. We're gonna press and hold those buttons on the side without pressing that side button. And then I'm gonna plug it in. And now I wait for the Apple logo to appear. And when it appears, we will release the buttons. This should take us into diagnostics and repair mode. You'll see a message that says, diagnostics allow Apple to identify potential hardware and software issues with the device. That is how you know that it is in diagnostics mode. So we're still waiting for it to load up. It's got that Apple logo on the screen, and then we'll be able to uh, move forward. So we'll continue to wait, let that Apple logo change, um, and we may even speed up this. Oh, look, it popped up. So it says uh, exactly what we thought. It says to complete a repair, a system configuration step may be required. May be required. Uh, I see a option that says start session and exit. The next thing that we're going to do is on the website, and I'll set this down so that I can properly do this. I will click continue. I will choose iPhone. And then uh, after I've placed the device in diagnostics mode, which I have, I enter the serial number. So you need to have the serial number for your phone, which I have written down somewhere. Uh, And so we will type that in 
And in fact, I'm just going to do the old copy and paste to get that in. And then we choose start session. I'll wait for that to load and we'll see that it pops up on this screen. Uh, I need to tap agree on the device in order to begin. So let's see what happens. Um, we will hit this start session. And we will choose the Wi-Fi network. We'll type in the password for the Wi-Fi network. And once we've done that, it will join the network. Once it has joined the network, uh, it's going to kind of talk to the server to make sure that this is working. I'll choose agree. And there you can see that it's loading, that this indeed is the iPhone 13 Pro Max uh, with this serial number, and it is initiating the process here. So we are loading that. And now you'll notice that the screen here changed. I've got the mobile resource inspector, audio output, display pixel anomalies, multi-touch, face ID, camera image quality. All of these tests are tests that I can do. So let's go with the mobile resource inspector, which uh, is a tool that checks the device's software version and validates the presence of hardware components to make sure that I've got all of those uh, components that I have. So we'll choose begin diagnostic, and it's going to go through this process to see uh, if everything is installed properly on the device. And you'll notice there's a little uh, bar that's loading now on the iPhone to do this mobile resource inspection test. Uh, so you'll notice uh, the screen just kind of flashed brighter um, and it's completing that test. It's running the barometer sensor test now and a Bluetooth scan to make sure that's working. I love that we're able to follow along here, uh, a compass sensor test. And of importance, this is something that we were not able to do before. This was a set of diagnostic tools that was only available to Apple service providers, both for Apple and third parties that had uh, special requirements that they passed. So the fact that we're able to access these diagnostic tools is really great and gives us more ability to work with the device than we've ever had. So pretty nifty stuff here as we're kind of testing different things. So you may have a device, maybe the screen isn't working properly, multi-touch isn't working properly. You're able to use this to actually do a full on uh, inspection and test of your device and make sure that it's working properly. Um, so it's still completing the process and check this out. Uh, it tested Apple Pay, battery condition, Bluetooth, cellular baseband, the LiDAR scanner, Wi-Fi, wireless charging, everything uh, seemed to be great. You can always print the results. So we'll choose another diagnostic suite. Let's do an audio output test. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's just gonna ask that you can hear the sounds and that they weren't distorted. Uh, so if you had, for example, distorted audio or no audio from the internal speakers, you would do this test. So I'll choose begin the diagnostic and we'll wait for the process once again to initiate. And then we shall see what this uh, actually involves here as it runs the test. So it's doing some audio output on the device. Um, you'll see perhaps a little audio output uh, there. And it says remove any case or cover and ensure the audio parts are free of dust and debris. Uh, disconnect any connected accessories and place the device on a flat surface with the display facing up. Don't move or cover the device while testing is in progress. So I think I can unplug it. We'll do that. And then I will place it down uh, on that flat surface and we'll choose continue. And then we'll see what happens as it tests uh, this. After you click or tap continue, a set of tones will play through the bottom speaker. Verify that the tones are audible and not distorted. So it's probably going to be hard for you to hear, but it is doing a series of tones uh, going up in pitch across different uh, tone. I mean, it's different pitches, but it's always going up in pitch uh, for each sound. And I was able to hear all of those sounds and they played correctly. 
Um, they sounded fine. They were not distorted. Uh, I didn't expect that there would be anything wrong with this device. Um, and it says, after you click or tap continue, a set of tones will play through the receiver. So that's going to be the one that goes near your ear. And once again, those same tones, although maybe a little bit higher in pitch. And then deeper in pitch. And let's see what happens. Yes, the audio played correctly through the receiver. And then once more, uh, it's going to play through the top speaker or the stereo speaker. So we'll do this test as well. Quite loud. <laughs> oh, that was different. I would play these for you, but it needs to be laid on a flat surface. So, uh, yes, the audio played correctly through the stereo speaker. And then we'll see if there's any other tests. So, yes, the audio worked, the sensors worked, the software worked, and the system worked. Uh, so, again, here we're able to do uh, display pixel anomalies. So it shows some colors and patterns to find out if there are pixel anomalies or perhaps if there's debris somewhere on the screen. Um, Multi-touch, which helps you find areas of the screen that aren't properly responding. Uh, face ID checks the face ID sensors to make sure that they're all working. And camera image quality uh, helps you find quality issues for the front and rear cameras. So if there's something going on with the camera, you'd be able to do that. Uh, once you have completed the session, uh, which in this case, I think we have completed, I'll choose end session. And it says on the phone, all tests completed. And so I can simply tap on those three dots. I can check the history of this to see what tests I ran. And I can hit the plus sign uh, to start another diagnostic session if I had started one on the website. So it's important that on Apple's side, you start to do that test. Uh, now that that's done, though, I can restart the device to move out of diagnostics mode. So we'll press and hold down on the two buttons. Uh, we could change the Wi-Fi to a different Wi-Fi. We could shut down, or we could just simply exit Diagnostics and Repair, um, which will then reboot the device uh, outside of Diagnostics and Repair and give us access to the phone without Diagnostics. For anyone who would prefer to fix their own device rather than needing to take it to an Apple store or a third party repair provider, this is a huge boon. I'm super excited about the fact that Apple has made these diagnostics tools available to us. Uh, I have an old iPad that the screen isn't working and being able to run these diagnostics tests on it would be fantastic. So. A uh, huge celebration. I think it's great that this is now available and that you yourself can run these diagnostics tests if you want to before you even need to take it in. Uh, and as far as Apple holding true to the right to repair, I hope we continue to see the company do so. Folks, thank you for tuning into this episode of Hands on Mac. I will be back uh, soon with another episode. Of course, we publish this show on Thursdays here on Twit. And thank you to you Club Twit members who help make all of this possible. We'll talk to you soon. Soon. Bye. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twip, which costs seven bucks a month, or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of home theater geekitude.